In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady of America, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It's interesting that during the election week, already on Sunday, the Office of Readings in, in the Church's liturgy has been in the Book of Maccabees. And if it's not a, it's, if it is, if there isn't a, a book to read, you might say, before you go to vote, that might be the book to read. Because it obviously has, just in the little, um, in the Office of Readings today, it has a um, very interesting antiphon or responsory. It says, My children, be courageous and strong in your obedience to the law, for by it you shall be glorified. So that, uh, you know, when we follow the law of God, you know, we're going to be blessed. The book of Maccabees is an excellent example of, of a family who, under great pressure to deny their faith or to deny their conscience, uh, did much to to resist those who were going to um, cause them to offend God. Now, in the book of Maccabees, of course, he did it the way that was only available to him, and that was he had re resorted to having to take up arms. But we live in this de very democratic society in which we live, and as they always say, every four years there's a peaceful revolution. We don't have to take up arms to to defeat an enemy, we can do it by a vote that is made with right conscience and according to our faith. And um, although we have in this election, you know, it seems that one of the guiding principles that many people when they go to vote is the limiting of, two, limiting of evil or the voting between the lesser of two evils, that may be a short-term solution, but it seems that if that's a guiding principle that we're going to have to base our decisions on every time we go four years is the limiting of evil, then it seems we don't have a very good political system that is promoting the right candidates. That's like someone limiting, voting to limit evil is like taking chemotherapy. Of course the patient's gonna die sooner or later, you're just letting it rot slower, die slower. And it seems that we need to find a better solution and better options than just voting to limit evil or the lesser of two evils. We need to have an option where we see that there are clear candidates who have good moral values all the way across the board. And um, this idea, especially when it comes to abortion, well, this, we have to get as Catholics into our head that we can't even start capitulating on abortion. Sometimes we'll say, well, the person says they're against abortion in all cases except rape and incest. Well, really, that's no, that really isn't, the exception is opening yourself up to everything because it's saying it's good to kill somebody under certain circumstances. So we really have to get our act together about uh, certain things and we need to um, really use our uh, Catholic initiative to see that we have candidates that one can go to the ballot box and not have to always make this struggle between limiting the evil. We really need to also have a better solution in the future for promoting candidates that one can really say is not, uh, you know, bet between the, the devil and the deep blue sea. This is um, one of the problems in our society today is that we live in this pluralistic mentality that somehow, you know, we're afraid to, to exercise our Catholic faith or speak it out publicly. And this is something what 
Uh, and because of that, we um, have let the culture evangelize Catholics. And that Catholics have, in many cases, become more of more American before they're Catholic or more Republican before they're Catholic or more Democrat before they're Catholic instead of being Catholic first as some bishops have recently so well put it. We're Catholic before we're anything else. And that is who our loyalty is. Judas Maccabeus and his brothers, their loyalty was to God. If he would have been around at the time of Christ, he would have been loyal to Christ. And that is what we have to have in our world today is this understanding that Christ is the one we serve, kingship of Christ. But yet even we'll find Catholic intellectuals today who scoff at this idea of the kingship of Christ as being just a, oh, that's an archaic and kind of a medieval idea. But really, if you understand what the kingship of Christ is all about, that Christ is be the king of all of our life, every aspect of our life, then it really is the best political system or the political view that we have to have in mind when we go to shape our society, that Christ must be the king. He must be the one that determines how we educate our children. He must be the one that determines how we uh, govern ourselves. You know, we have before us in this country, we have a very good document written according to sound principles of natural law, the constitution of this country, and yet we have probably few Catholics who know what that document says. And yet uh, we have public servants who are actually working to undermine it, and we're doing it right in front of our eyes because we don't know our constitution and our, the documents upon which our country was founded. So we need to become more knowledgeable as Catholics about the system of our government and how it was intended by our founding fathers, the principles and the natural law that it, it does so well to uh, help uphold because it's written very well, but also to um, take our Catholic social doctrine that uh, many Catholics don't even probably know or they have misinterpreted it and made it into Marxist uh, liberation theology, which isn't the Catholic social doctrine. But, you know, we need to, um, we need to really, uh, I think this whole climate of our country shows that we need to get back to basics. We need to get to work. And we need to, um, if we have to, uh, establish a system or a party that will reflect the principles upon which we can say that Christ is king, that really we can say that a God-fearing man would not have any qualms of conscience about voting for someone because that person reflects and that platform reflects the sound moral law, the sound natural law, and then the sound teaching of Christ the king. This is what is needed in our world today. And um, um, when we look at, you know, Catholics today, uh, we can see where we haven't lived out our vocation, how it has such a big impact on our society. When those who have been given the vocation to teach, Catholic universities have sold themselves out to the culture and to the, to the money interest. You might say they sold... Christ for 30 pieces of silver to teach instead of the Catholic teaching to promote contraception among college students, which is a very real uh, situation. They took a bribe and denied the teaching of the church uh, so that they could get a status in, in, uh, uh, amongst the, what they wanted to impress, you might say. Then we see that you know uh, we've we've wreaked havoc in our society. We need to um, get back to the basics. We need to once again turn to the church for for the solutions to the problems of our world today.
The church has always had the solutions in every age of whatever is afflicting man. And that, of course, is basically the truth and the sacraments. We need to, if we haven't been, go back to confession first, and then go and open up the catechism, start reading it, and also praying to Our Lady to help us to understand it correctly. It's interesting that after the Council of Ephesus, one of the first public prayers given to Our Lady, offered to Our Lady, was a prayer in which she was, re, uh, in which she was entitled the ruler or the rule of orthodoxy. That Our Lady is the one that will keep us orthodox in our faith in other words, that we'll have the true understanding of the teaching of the church. It's not that we just, it's not like a magical thing. It's that if we truly have devotion to Our Lady and we're praying to her and we're trying to really emulate and imitate the woman who said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to thy word. Then we will strive also to be obedient, humble. And therefore we will uh, have the grace to understand the teaching of the church. No one can have true devotion to Our Lady and be led astray. There may be people who have false devotion to Our Lady, you know, and get mixed up. But if they have true devotion, they love her according to the way the church has loved her throughout the ages. They look to the church as their model how to love Our Lady by praying the rosary, by imitating her virtues, and by meditating on her words of scripture. You know, do whatever he tells you, and I am the handmaid of the Lord. You will arrive at a clearer understanding of what the church's teaching is. And she will make sure that we have a correct um, mindset and that we won't ever, as she never did, abandon Christ for anything. That's what we need to do in our uh, short term. Long term, we need to just once again get back to the basics and ask Our Lady to help us to preserve our great land and the good things that are in it and to correct those things that are needing correction. Um, scripture also says, do not place your trust in princes. Um, you know, however this election goes, which we hope it goes for the good of the church and for the good of souls, but we also always keep in mind that God is in charge and that we cannot uh, put our trust in princes. We need to put our trust in Christ. And when we go to vote, we need to vote with him in mind and what will please him and to have a correct uh, uh, understanding of the mind of Christ. There are so many people today who think they, who can somehow twist their minds into thinking that Christ would approve of contraception and abortion. Obviously, they have a false Christ. And that's probably because there have been so many people teaching false prophets out there, teaching that. And people are willing to, for itchy ears, are willing to follow that because they want to go the way of the flesh. Let us today, on this election day, pray, offer little sacrifices if we're able to, and, you know, um, do our best from this day forward to be good Catholics first and then good Americans. And being good Catholics, we will be good Americans. We will be good citizens. But we first have to always remind ourselves that our citizenship in heaven comes before our citizenship here on earth. And that Our Lady is the one who teaches us how to always keep the right order, the right balance, in that um, very sometimes difficult walk that we make. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.